Glory be to God. God is good all the time. I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the Lord is in control of our situation, even in the coronavirus. I believe and I trust that you've been praying. And I know that God is going to hear our prayers. God will answer us. If you're a child of God, you need to be strong. You need to live in the Word. And you need to know what is happening, even in the end times. As you can see the situation, we are more or less going into the end times. Hallelujah. So tonight I just want to bring a word to you that I brought before in the house of the Lord. I um, want to talk to you about the end times, specifically title of my message, uh, Exposing the Antichrist. Exposing the Antichrist. Hallelujah. I'm in the book of uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. That's where I am. We'll read a few verses from uh, verse 1 maybe to verse 8. Uh, there are many apostles in the Bible who exposed the Antichrist and his nature and his character. By now you and I know that uh, the devil has many names and he appears in many forms in the Bible. He's described you know, in many ways by many apostles. And some of the major prophets in the Bible was given a revelation of the Antichrist and Isaiah was also given the revelation of the Antichrist and uh, Apostle Paul was given uh, the revelation as he wrote the letter of the book of, to the church in Thessalonica. Uh, the revelation, uh, you know, Apostle John uh, at the Isle of Patmos. So tonight we want to look at uh, how you and I can understand what's going on. And I uh, will take a series, obviously, by God's grace. And using the Antichrist. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And uh, from verse 1 to 8, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word or by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. The apostle is confirming that the day of the Lord is at hand. And verse 3, he says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there be a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, notice that the Bible already starts to describe to us the names of the devil. Hallelujah. The name of uh, uh, the Antichrist, the name of the beast, and the name of his uh, triune uh, nature. Amen. So, uh, then the Bible says in verse 4, uh, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called of God, or that is worship, so that he, uh, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So already from these verses, we can see that uh, the Bible talks about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible talks about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in uh, our era, as you look at the environment, as you see what is going on in the world, we can say that the Lord is coming back to take his church soon. Amen. So tonight I just want to give you a guideline on uh, maybe what I will call an introduction towards knowing, uh, you know, the nature, the character of the Antichrist. Uh, so point number one, we want to know that the Antichrist is mentioned by different names and alliances in the Bible. There are different names and different alliances. The Bible speaks about the Antichrist and his behavior and his character being the behavior and the character of Satan. Hallelujah. And also the Bible speaks more about the Antichrist as much as we are aware of before it talks about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 4, the Antichrist is known as the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 4. The Bible says that thou shalt take up this proverb again against the king of Babylon and say how has the oppressor seized, the golden city seized. Babylon is a system of operation. I'll talk about that as we go by. And so the Bible recognizes the king of Babylon. Hallelujah. If you study Bible history, you discover that there was an era when uh, the Roman Empire was in place and Nero was the king at the time. And then came uh, uh, King Alexander and the rest of them. There was a Babylonian kind of system operating, which is still uh, around in the world. And uh, we'll learn about that as we go by. But I wanted you to know that the first name that we can learn is that uh, 
the Antichrist is, is defined by Isaiah as the king of Babylon. Hallelujah. And uh, obviously, uh, the other name that you know is Lucifer. In Isaiah, again, chapter 14, verse 12, the Bible says, How you have fallen uh, from heaven, O Lucifer. So we know that Lucifer is the name of Satan and also is connected to the Antichrist one way or another. Hallelujah. The enemy called Lucifer uh, used to be an angel in heaven. But you know, due to rebellion, due to his ego, due to his self-exhortation, he was kicked out of heaven because he wanted to rise and become above God Almighty. Now you and I know up to today that uh, God is Almighty. There is no power, there is no devil, there is no demon that can ever rise to his level. Hallelujah. So when we say Lucifer, we're talking about Satan and his nature and his behavior. And this is the fallen angel that is troubling the world. Amen. Number three, he is also called the beast. In the book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 1, uh, the apostle John, uh, he says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, and ten horns upon his ten horns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. So the apostle John is at the island of Patimot, and in a vision, God takes him in a vision, and he sees a beast. Imagine this huge beast with seven heads. One body, seven heads, and also at the same time, ten horns. And on top is written the name of blasphemy. It's written blasphemy. What is to blasphemy? To blasphemy is to speak against God. To blaspheme is to, to, to dishonor God. To blaspheme is to reject God. To blaspheme is to grieve the presence of the Holy Spirit and God Almighty. So the beast that he saw in the vision is another name of Satan and is also another name of the Antichrist. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 7 verse 8. Daniel also was given a revelation. As I said, uh, the major prophets, Daniel, Isaiah, uh, Apostle Paul, and also John were given the revelation and the different names of uh, the Antichrist. So Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 7 verse 8, he was revealed to him as a little horn. I consider the horns. I'm reading from verse 7. And behold, there came up among them another there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man. So as Daniel was looking at this horn coming out of a he god, he saw four he gods. And uh, then the horns disappeared of the god, except this last one. The horns disappeared. One horn was shooting out from the head. And as that horn was shooting out, it was a little horn. And the Bible says that little horn had eyes as of a man. It also had a mouth and it was speaking great things. Notice that the Bible says it was speaking great things. Hallelujah. That means the Antichrist is definitely a human being. Hallelujah. The Antichrist is going to be a man that the devil will use in the end times. He will have great oratory. He will have great things. He will speak powerfully. He and many people will be misled. Hallelujah. But we thank God for grace that you and I who know the word of God, we will also encourage others to know the names and uh, the signs that this is the Antichrist. Hallelujah. Now this is why, again, when you look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, verse 3, we see that uh, uh, he is called uh, the man of sin. Let me read it again for you. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not be falling away first, that the man of sin, you and I have sinned, but when we sin, we repent. When the Bible talks about the man of sin, it is talking about a man who will not desire to, to, to repent. There's no repentance in him. He will thrive in doing evil. He will thrive in being used by Satan, and he will thrive in bringing the whole world together to do evil. The Bible calls him a man of sin. In the same verse, it says a son of perdition. A son of perdition. That word perdition indicates underground. It indicates hell. It indicates hate. Hallelujah. So when we read the Bible, we realize that we are not ignorant of what is happening in the world. And you and I must not be ignorant because 
The Bible in the same uh, chapter of 2 Thessalonians chapter 8, the Bible calls him that wicked one. So we have different names that the Bible explains about the Antichrist. We have learned that he's the king of Babylon. We have learned that he's Lucifer. We have learned that he's the beast. We have also learned that he's a little horn. We have learned that he's that wicked individual. We have also learned that he's a man of sin. And we have also learned that he is uh, a son of perdition. Hallelujah. Point number two. Let's look at the character of the Antichrist. Let's look at the character of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is an embodiment of a human being. The Antichrist is coming in the form of an individual, a man, hallelujah, a terrible personage, a person with a bad character, somebody who is a VIP, somebody who is a star, somebody who is a celebrity, somebody who is well known by everybody, hallelujah. At the time, everybody will know about him. Somebody with great speech, according to what we have studied here. Somebody who speaks a lot. However, their aim and drive is to influence every person in the world, to influence leaders in the world. So we are talking about somebody who is influential. Hallelujah. We're not talking about somebody who is going to be a small person, doesn't have influence. Somebody with power, that's what the Bible teaches us. A terrible person with a terrible personage. An individual who now has all these different names we have learned in the Bible. Amen. We have learned that he is the king of Babylon, which is a system. We have learned that he is Lucifer. We have learned that he is the son of perdition, the son of sin, a man of sin, and the one who thrives in blasphemy and also one who thrives in wickedness. That's what the Bible has taught us. Hallelujah. So in the character of the Antichrist, number one, the Bible tells us that he will deny Jesus as the Christ. He will deny Jesus as, his, as, as the Christ. First John chapter 2, verse 22. The Bible says, Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. So the Antichrist will deny the existence of Jesus Christ as a savior to mankind, as the Christ, as the only door, as the only way to God Almighty, as the only way to heaven. The Antichrist will be adamant that Jesus never lived, he never existed, there's nothing like that, hallelujah. And a lot of people will be deceived by his oratory, by his speech that he is speaking right. Now, you and I know that there are already people who say there is no God, I don't believe in Jesus, I don't believe in this and that, hallelujah. However, the Antichrist, because of his powerful nature, in the sense that he will rule the world, he will rule leaders, he will influence many men and women, he will speak to politicians, he will speak to, to entrepreneurs and people who are wealthy, and they will all hear what he is saying. Because of that influence, he would deny that Jesus Christ is Christ. Hallelujah. Character number two. Character number two, he would deny that Jesus came in the flesh. You and I know that our Lord Jesus Christ was born through a virgin woman by the name Mary. The Holy Spirit caused the conception and Mary carried the baby and the baby was born. So that is part of the doctrine of Christianity. And we know and we believe that Jesus manifested in the flesh, even though she was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was carried by a woman. So he was in the flesh like we are in the flesh right now. But the Antichrist would deny that, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist. That's what First John chapter 4, verse 3 has said to us. So they are going, there's going to be a denial that Jesus ever existed in the flesh. There's going to be a denial that it is impossible for any individual to be born uh, by, by conception of the Holy Spirit. It is a myth to believe that. So the Antichrist, his character, the second one, as I've shown you, is denial that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. 
His third character is uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 4. There is going to be an evil world system. Now, we saw in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4, that uh, the Bible says that uh, he is the king of Babylon. Babylon is a system. It's a way of operation where everyone lines up to that kind of operation. For example, in our world, we do have traditions. Amen. I can say the Zulus have a tradition, the Tongas have a tradition, the Ndebeles have a tradition, the, 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 the Sutus have a tradition. We all have kind of traditions, one way or another. And we, we, we normally hold on to those traditions and uh, we, we believe in them so much that we, we apply them. Hallelujah. However, the Babylonian system is going to be more than a tradition. For example, right now, as you can see, uh, the world is talking about the coronavirus, it's talking about uh, uh, having a mark on your forehead or on your right hand, and everybody is forced into that kind of pattern, into that kind of system. So the Babylonian system is part of the character of the Antichrist. So when the Bible talks about an evil world system, it's talking about that. A system where abomination will grow, a system where filthiness and dirt will grow, and a system where, you know, this man is going to be exalted in a high form. People will think he's bringing peace, he's bringing order in the world without knowing that this is a revelation, you know, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Amen. Revelation chapter 17 verse 4. And the arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication verse 5 and upon her head was a name written Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abomination of the earth system a woman the natural is a uh, is, is 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 an empowerment to humanity a woman gives birth a woman takes care of children a woman has got a nurturing uh, nature a woman has got a loving nature a woman has the grace to see that the family is in order hallelujah Hallelujah. So now when we look at this, the Bible talks about a woman that is revealed in Revelation 17 verse 4 by the apostle in a vision that this woman has a golden cup full of abomination, full of evil, full of, of, of hatred for, for the things of God. Abomination is hatred for the things of God. It's dishonor. Is blasphemy against God. And the Bible says, full of abomination and filthiness and also great fornication. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says, upon her head were written a mystery. So this is a mysterious individual, but who comes up that we come to recognize this is the way that the Antichrist is manifesting. And then again we see the word Babylon the Great. Babylon as a system of operation. Everybody complying to that part of system that will be put together. Hallelujah. The great mother of harlots. How can any person be a great mother of prostitution in the world? So the Bible talks about the great mother of harlots and an abomination on the earth, on this planet earth. Hallelujah. So it is a system of operation that the enemy will bring together uh, to reveal the Antichrist. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Number four character, that he exalts himself. Let's look at Second uh, Thessalonians again, uh, chapter 2, verse 4. He exalts himself above every god. The god in the heavens, the gods that people save, these false idols, these false gods, he exalts himself above that. That means there's going to be an elimination of a lot of traditions in order to uh, make sure that there's only one pattern of worship to exalt the Antichrist. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Who who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. Now, if you look at that word God, it is capital G. So talking about God Almighty in the heavens, exalting himself above God. And the Bible says above anything that is called God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. And then the Bible says all that is worshipped. So whatever you are worshipping, whatever people are worshipping, those will fall away as the Antichrist wants the worship to himself. The Antichrist wants the worship to himself. And then the Bible says uh, so that he as God sits in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Hallelujah. Again, I can refer you to Daniel chapter 11. Verse 36, remember the four major prophets who got this major revelation. Daniel is one of them, Isaiah is one of them, Apostle Paul is one of them, and John is one of them. So I will be within those, I'll be shifting scriptures from within those ones. Daniel chapter 11, verse 36, and the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself. Which king? The king of Babylon, the Antichrist. The Bible says he shall do what? Exalt himself. He will lift himself. He will force people to, to exalt him. And this is how the devil is going to use this man. Hallelujah. He will empower this particular individual. The Bible says he will exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. So any other God that people worship, whether it is Buddha, whether it is a... Uh, 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 Krishna, whether whatever the name of the God, he will exalt himself above all the other gods. Whether it is a Hindu God, whether it is a, a lozy God or whatever the God, he will exalt himself. That's what the Bible says. He will exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. And he will speak marvelously things against the God of the gods, meaning the God of the heavens. Amen. The Bible says he shall prosper till the indignation is accomplished. So in his exhortation, the system is coming to a place where money will be flowing into the hands of one individual. One individual will control because of the power of money. Hallelujah. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says money answers everything. That scripture is relevant in many ways. In this particular uh, uh, passage, we see that the Bible says he shall prosper. So systems will be put in place where now, you know, whether it is a chip or whatever it is that will come up, you know, uh, the mark on the forehead, people will not be able to buy or sell according to the word of God. So that the monies are being channeled in a particular manner, in a particular grace. Hallelujah. Verse 37, neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. So the character of the Antichrist, he would deny Jesus as the Christ. Number two, he would deny that Jesus came in the flesh. Number three, he is setting up a world system, a Babylonian system. Number four, the whole purpose is to exalt himself, is to be worshipped, and above all, it is for him to become the most powerful financial individual. Hallelujah. Are we together? All right, let's move on. Pillar number three. Pillar number three, we look at what is his desire ultimately. The devil's desire ultimately for the Antichrist, I have many points I can give you, but I just want to take three away. Amen. Number one is power. Number one is power. Revelation chapter 13. It talks about horns again. Amen. And the Bible says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast. This is Apostle John again. He is standing in a vision before the ocean. And the Bible says he saw a beast out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns. And we read that earlier on. Hallelujah. It has the name of blasphemy on top. Hallelujah. Horns symbolize power. Amen. In the book of Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18 to 21, it talks about the four horns. Amen. And uh, as Zechariah was shown the vision, he is asking, what do these horns symbolize? And his, he was told that this is... Horns symbolize scattering. Anything in the way would be scattered. So horns symbolize power to scatter anything that is not wanted in the way. So the Antichrist's desire is to scatter anything to do with Christianity, anything to do with the word of God, anything to do with the Bible. I'm not sure whether you are aware that uh, there's a lot of Bible versions that certain scriptures have been removed, especially scriptures that have got to do with Jesus Christ as being Lord and Savior. 
Amen. Sometime back, there was a Bible that was put together called the Slave Bible. In that Bible, everything to do with the law, everything to do with order was removed. Only stories remained. Hallelujah. And you are probably familiar that uh, there's a lot of versions that uh, do not honor the actual grace upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, he desires power. He desires power. And he desires that he would be powerful. That is the desire of Satan to, to, to empower the Antichrist, this human being, this person, that he would have power over everybody else. Irrelevant of your political position, irrelevant of whether you are financially powerful, irrelevant of your level, control. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he speaks, then everybody will listen, everybody will do what he says. Amen. So you can see there's a system in place that will come to, 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 together. Already, for the first time in the world, every person in the world has been affected by what is called COVID-19. Amen. Never did anybody think, how can you touch somebody? Somebody else who is in America, somebody else who is in China, how can you touch the here's a virus that has come up? And we all believe that uh, there is a spirit behind it. Hallelujah. In the book of Daniel, Daniel was praying, uh, uh, Daniel was praying. And the Bible teaches us that Daniel, as he was praying for 21 days, amen, the first day God heard his prayers. However, there were two rulers in the land. Amen. The first ruler was the natural ruler on the ground. The natural ruler on the ground was Cyrus. Cyrus was in charge, but things were not the same way they should have been. Things were not in order at all. So as Daniel was praying, Cyrus could not see that what was happening on the ground was spiritual. As Daniel was praying, God revealed to him that there was another ruler in the atmosphere called the king of Persia. Hallelujah. The king of Persia. So there were two rulers. So to everything we go through in life, even as an individual, even as a family, there is a natural behavior, a natural manifestation, but how is also a power behind the invisible. There is a power behind the natural. And you and I, as we pray, we need to understand the power behind the natural because that is what is causing the situation. So when we talk about coronavirus, we are not talking about a flu. It's not just a flu. There is a spirit behind it. There is a power behind it. Hallelujah. There's a satanic power behind it. And that's the reason why people are dying in thousands. Amen. There are people dying in different countries in you know, the world and dying in mass numbers. Some countries are even having problems burying the people, burying the corpses. And of course, the, the families behind those people do not even have the opportunity to gracefully bury their people. So there is a spirit behind, praise the name of the Lord. When you look at what is happening now, one can tell that there is a system coming in place. Amen. There's a Babylonian system coming in place to set the desire of the Antichrist for power. Amen. To set the desire of the Antichrist for power. All right. Let's look at the second desire. His second desire is worship, as we have seen in the Bible. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 4. The Bible says, and they worshipped the dragon. Who is the dragon? The dragon is Satan. Amen. They worshipped the dragon, which is Satan which gave power unto the the dragon gave power to the beast who is a dragon the dragon is certain he gave power to the beast who is a beast the beast is the antichrist hallelujah so the devil will give the antichrist power that these things must manifest amen that you would have that power that people would worship him and that he would be exalted amen so the dragon here, as we have noticed, it stands for the devil himself, stands for Satan, who will shape his achievements through earthly potentates. Amen. The czars, the kings, the monarchies, the leaders of the world, the powerful people, and set up a system in place that people can follow for the exaltation and the worship of the devil through the Antichrist. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Number three, his desire is to force a mark on the forehead of individuals. 
Amen. Let's look at Revelation chapter 14. And the third angel followed them. This is the angel of God saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or his hand, the same, verse 10, the same shall drink of the wine of wrath of God. Amen. So the Antichrist's desire is power. Number two is worship. Number three is to put a mark, to force people to worship him, to exalt him. Amen. And so the Bible shows us here that uh, the angel warned people. I hope I'm that angel today. I hope you'll be that angel today to warn people not to take this mark. Because the Bible says it is a mark of wrath. Hallelujah. It is a mark of wrath, which is poured out without mixture to the cup of indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Amen. So the devil is trying to put up a system together, a Babylonian system, where men and women will worship him, will honor him. He's got control, he's got power. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God for grace. I want to share with you and encourage you that even though these things are happening, the Bible is clear about the coming of the Antichrist. It says to us that the church of God will be raptured. You and I will be going to heaven before the Antichrist manifests. So what should we be doing now? What we should be doing now is inform our brothers, inform our sisters, those who do not know God, those on the street, neighbors, you know, that they need to turn their lives to Jesus. They need to give their lives to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says when you receive that mark, verse 11 of Revelation chapter 14, that the smoke of the torment ascended up forever and ever. And they that have no rest day and night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receives the mark of the name. Hallelujah. So the Lord is gracious to us to encourage us that as we are looking at the situation now, there is a spirit behind. There's an antichrist spirit behind trying to take as many people to hell. Your job and my job is to encourage somebody to know God, is to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, is to let you know our friends, our neighbors, our cousins and whoever they are, that God loves them so much. They need to turn around. The world will never be at peace. There is a season we are getting to where the Antichrist will come up and it's going to be a very difficult time. I'm not prophesizing that. I'm just teaching the word of God. Hallelujah. So what am I saying tonight? What I'm saying tonight is that know the word of God. Help somebody out there. Let me take you down to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and uh, just to encourage you to know that the power of God is very, very powerful and the word of God is the powerful word of God. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. This is Jeremiah. Amen. And so Jeremiah also has a vision. And the Bible says, the hand of the Lord touched his mouth. Praise the name of Jesus. I pray that the hand of God will touch your mouth. What happened after that? The Bible says, the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. I have put my words in your mouth. Hallelujah. Godly words are powerful words. The word of God in your mouth is powerful. Amen. Verse 10, he says, See, I have set this, I have, I have this day set thee over the nations and all kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw and to build and to plant. Glory be to God. So Jeremiah felt the hand of the Lord on his mouth. And God says, I have put my word in your mouth. What is that word in your mouth? Listen, my brother, my sister, the word in your mouth, when you pray, you are uprooting, you are destroying, you are frustrating the plans of the devil of Jesus. The Antichrist may want to come before his time, but by your prayers, by you declaring the word of God, by standing up in the grace and declaring the devil is a liar and a loser in the name of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters will know Jesus as Lord
Savior. And by empowering yourself in the word, declaring that God's goodness is upon your life, upon your business, upon your family, declaring that the devil is always a loser. This is the way that was given to Jeremiah. Hallelujah. The word says in Jeremiah chapter 29 that God is even asking, my word not like a fire? The word of God is a fire. Is my word not like a fire? Is it not like a hammer? The word of God is a fire. There is no devil. There is no system. There is no plan of the enemy that will come to pass in our lives as we stand together, as we spend hours in prayer, as we rise up boldly. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the word of God in your mouth is a powerful word. Use it. Speak about it. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the evening. Whatever time you have. Five minutes. Ten minutes. The word of God. God is a fire and a hammer. You and I have a genuine existence here on the planet Earth to fulfill the purpose of God in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me take you to my last scripture again within the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 14. The Bible says, uh, Wherefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire. Hallelujah. I will make my words in your mouth fire. God has promised if you speak his word, fire is coming out of your mouth. You may not see the physical fire, but there is a spiritual fire burning demonic activities, break down the agenda of the Antichrist, coming against powers of Babylon. Hallelujah. As I shared with you in the book of Daniel, Daniel was praying. There was a natural manifestation. The king Cyrus was on the land, on the ground. But there was another power in the atmosphere, the ruler of Persia. Amen. So what you may not see in the natural does not mean it does not exist. Amen. So God says, I put my words in your mouth and my words are a fire. Hallelujah. They are a fire. You may not see the fire when you speak, but that fire is happening. As I minister tonight, that fire is to frustrate the plans of the enemy, to come against demonic forces, to come against the arrangement of the Antichrist, to come against the spirit behind the coronavirus, to come against anything that the devil has lined up for any child of God in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will not just rest. I pray that you will be ministered to and you will use the word of God. You will speak grace. You will declare the situation. And together as we pray in the various countries, in the various homes where we are, God will answer us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. There's a lot of people who are afraid right now, afraid to die because of the sickness, afraid to get the sickness. I want to encourage you. Fear is not your portion. The Bible has told us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. So you should not be afraid. Instead, you should be bold. You should say, I'm a child of God. There are even people afraid to come to church. Hallelujah. The church is a sanctuary. It's where the presence of God is. There's a higher grace in the house of God than there is in your own house. So even though the government has allowed us only to meet for 50 people, you could take that opportunity and say, let me go and touch the altar of God. Hallelujah. Let me go and tap in the anointing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because, you know, this Babylonian system, as it carries on, I want you to know this is a fact. Amen. The Lord spoke to me the other day about it. As we are streaming today, we cannot guarantee we'll continue to stream. Amen. The Antichrist's behavior and character is to try and shut down the work of God is to try to shut down the plans of God, is to try and shut down the Bible, is to try and shut down the medias, the means that we are using even to minister the word of God. So we may not always be there to stream because whoever, whoever owns Facebook or WhatsApp or whatever media you're using may not be a Christian. 
Hallelujah. And if they are not a Christian, amen, once this pressure comes upon them, they will surrender. And so the doors may be shut down for us. So right now, while we are still in the grace of God, we need to speak the word. We need to build others. We need to encourage others in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to warn people that Jesus is coming back for his people and we must be ready in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I pray that you've been blessed tonight. I pray that God will continue to build you. I pray that God will help you understand what is going on. Above all, I pray that you may not fear. Fear is not the portion of a child of God. Stand boldly. You have the word of God in your mouth. Speak that scripture. Speak that word. Make that prayer. Make that declaration. Stand and be strong. Bible says God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ever ask or think according to the power working in us. What is that power working in us? The power to pray. The power to open our mouths and declare the devil is a liar and a loser in the name of Jesus. God is still on the throne. I pray for you. May Jehovah punish the devil over your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. It is well. Until I see you again, God bless you. Amen.